Welcome back to the channel where it's another day and another update for Battlefield 2042. But this time it's update 3.2 and it's a huge one that has snowballed from being just the class rework and Breakaway 2.0 to becoming something much, much bigger and becoming my most hyped update since season one. There are so many changes, big and small, that are going to improve the game drastically in this update. So let's get straight into them. Like I said, the big, the small, the stealth, the ones you might not know about, and I have to thank the people who playtested the update in the capture session for providing with some of the important details here that weren't in the patch notes. So let's get straight into it. First up, we have the specialist rework. Specialists are now into their own classes with new proficiencies for each class. For example, when using assault rifles, assaults will have three extra magazines. When using SMGs, supports will have a faster quick draw speed than other classes that use SMGs and so on and so forth. All of the gadgets have now been reassigned along with a few throwables to fit their designated slots. For example, launches are now made for engineers as they are anti-tank roles and it goes on for each class. Obviously, it's only been a day, so we can't really have a look at the whole meta of the game and see how it's changed, but I think this class rework will make it so that vehicles are a lot more threatening. It'll be a lot easier to kind of figure out who has what in terms of gadgets because of their class now. And I think the game will kind of slow down a little bit in terms of the amount of explosives going on and the amount of, say, M5 launcher spam which in my book is a good thing, but it's going to be interesting to see how the proficiencies play out too. Is having better accuracy when lying down for the engineer, for example, going to absolutely make some weapons busted, like the Avancis? We'll just have to see. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with the class change so far. It's just going to take a little while to adjust. Speaking of adjusting, we have the Breakaway rework. This is the biggest rework to date. I mean, just look at the map. It is ridiculously different to how it used to be. New shaders, new layouts, new cover, new everything pretty much. With some absolutely incredible and breathtaking sights to see on this map. One highlight for me is the big oil containers or fuel containers or whatever they are. They used to explode on the map with some awesome sound design, but the explosion itself wasn't that big. But now we have an absolutely massive explosion for the middle of the map. This map now plays great as well. It's so much better than it used to be. And I can't wait to try out Hazard Zone on this one because I used to get it in rotation on that mode quite a lot. But yeah, Breakaway 2.0 is incredible. It's quickly turning into one of my favorite maps to play right now in the game. Maybe it's just because it's a new map and it's fresh, but my God, is it a lot of fun and it looks the part as well. We have the addition of thermal optics in this update as well, along with new scopes like the long range scopes and a new suppressor for the MVK shotgun. Talking about thermal optics as well, these have varying ranges and they also apply to Zane's airburst rifle. So have a look out for those on all of your guns and see where you can apply them. We have the new APS system for tanks as well to give them a bit of a buff. Tanks are a lot stronger now and I'm kind of waiting to see how that plays out in the long run with balance. But at the moment they feel a lot tougher like they did in BF5. But for now I am enjoying the novelty of having tanks be a lot more beefy and kind of thinking oh shit when they turn up which is a weird feeling to have in 2042. Long range marksman kill bonus numbers are back. Now if you get long range kill, it'll tell you the amount of meters it took to kill that person. This is awesome because you used to have to ping their location after you killed them to try and find out how far it was. So it's really nice to see this in the game. We also have hit damage indicators, but you have to go into the settings and turn this on. It seems to be a bit of a beta feature, but now you're gonna be able to track how much damage you do to the enemies through an actual indicator with numbers on the screen, which is awesome to see. We now have below radar for air vehicles where if they fly low enough, they can't be locked onto, but obviously that makes them better targets for wildcats to shoot at, so that kind of balances itself out. And it gives a little bit more nuance to the more skilled pilots who can pull off these maneuvers at a low altitude and rewards them. We have some new portal weapons coming over to All Out Warfare. We have the M39 EMR, the PP2000 and the MTAR21. Haven't tried out all of these yet. Might make a video on them because they're obviously new vault weapons. I have to cover those on the channel, so be looking out for that in the future. We also have new portal gadgets that have been ported over to All Out Warfare, which is amazing to see. I've been waiting for these and some balancing has been done to these to make sure they're not completely scuffed. Some of them didn't really work very well, such as claymores, but now they've been changed completely to kind of work like insertion beacons when you put them down on the floor. They've also been balanced so that their trigger radius and damage radius aren't too big either. And they can't be deployed close to ladders or zip lines, so you're pretty safe if you're going up those. But it is amazing to see these different gadgets like the EOD bot and Tracer Dark Gun come into All Out Warfare. And interestingly, and I'll have to follow this up with some more testing, but I think the Tracer Dart actually locks onto the dart if you're shooting a launcher at it. So you could fire this into a stealth helo and they couldn't counter it, which is kind of an interesting thing. 
Now let's head into some of the smaller changes. Some of the stuff that has just been adjusted a little bit or tweaked, starting with the fact that squad reviving is now done with a med pen stim like in BF3 Portal instead of defibs, whereas normal revives are now done with defibs. Speaking of defibrillators, their sounds and HUD elements for charging up have also been changed to give a little bit more indication of when you're charging up, as you can now choose to either manually defib and charge it up with R2 or whatever your left mouse I guess is, or you can go and press the interact key like you used to before. Both are now options, it's great to see that accessibility feature in there for whoever wants to use either option. There seems to be a bit more weight to soldier movement as well. Things feel a little slower, especially in terms of sliding and running around. Maybe it's an animation change, maybe it's a sound change as well, we'll get onto that in a minute. But soldiers overall feel a little bit more weighty. To increase readability, you'll also notice that soldiers now have their classes displayed above their heads, which is an awesome feature. Explosions in general have seen a massive buff in quality, really. I used Breakaway earlier as an example, that explosion is huge and looks like the one from the original gameplay trailer that we saw in Hourglass. But overall explosions and their particle effects and their impacts have been improved a lot and it's awesome to see this. We seem to have got another little buff for tanks as their turret rotation speed is a lot faster, allowing them to react to situations faster too. Sound design seems far better overall, things feel punchier and beefier and I see this kind of every update, it gradually improves and we've got it yet again here where gunfights feel a lot more impactful, explosions as well, everything is sounding crisper than ever. And this is important because one of the things Battlefield is known for is its soundscapes, and now 2042's is on par with previous titles. ADS speed has also been adjusted overall, things feel a lot slower than they used to and I think this is a good change. I'm not sure if it's just the animations that have been adjusted, but I think the actual base times have too. Everything feels a little bit slower and more like BF4. If you hop over to look at your specialist, you'll now realise there are specialist bios if you want to read up on all of their lore. I know Comet will be a fan of this one as he runs the Exodus archives. There is now an icon on the scoreboard to show repairs and healing and stuff like that, which encourages a lot more team play. It's great to see that represented on the scoreboard with score. The med pen is now a lot faster to use as it is a permanent slot for the assault class. It takes about a second now to replenish your health with it where it used to take two. The speed of the recoilless M5 has been increased now that there'll be less people running it. I know I for one are kind of going to have to relearn the muscle memory with this launcher, but I'm sure it'll come in no time. Proximity sensor is no longer a grenade, it's now in the open gadget slot to stop people from spamming and to stop the infamous you have been spotted simulator that 2042 had claimed to have been in certain subreddits and forums. Players on the scoreboard are now slightly faded in terms of their titles when they're dead to make it clearer who's dead and alive currently. And the inventory has got a new slot for the open gadget. Mouse input on PC has been improved a lot. I don't play PC so I'm just going off the notes for this one but apparently some of the stuff that was blocking input from being put in properly and being delayed has been taken out therefore it should be a lot smoother now. There are new controller layouts on PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and Xbox One X. All of those platforms have new controller binds just because there's more buttons to press now because there's more inventory slots. This is gonna take a little time to get used to, but to be honest, it'll work far better for things like throwing knives, having grenade be LB or L1. We've got improved death animations from explosions as well. Those should feel a lot more weighty and realistic. And we've also got improved ragdolls after a melee takedown. On top of this, there are improved transitions between sliding and being prone, and improved responsiveness when meleeing. This last one I feel quite a lot when I'm trying to melee. You press the button and a second later your soldier will do it, but now that's a lot more responsive. Blood splatter has been improved when shooting enemies. That should no longer stand out in the dark and glow like it used to. And we've got some new animations when falling from a height. Similar to BF5, your character will kind of have a little stumble or roll or fall if they fall from too high of a height. These animations add a lot immersion-wise, but also will affect your aim if you land too harshly when parachuting or landing. What also breaks immersion is when your character falls from a height and then kind of sinks into the ground or a friendly player model does this when falling from a height, and this should no longer happen, so that's a good change. The issue of the camera being broken during insertion where you can look around and look into your own body has been fixed now, thank God. That was a bit of a nightmare. It was really weird looking and that has been sorted now. Indicators for directional damage have been updated to make it a lot more readable when you're being shot from separate directions. You can figure out where that's from and respond accordingly. I for one prefer these indicators so much more than the old ones. They're so much more readable and help you react faster. When squad reviving, you will now give 25 HP instead of 50 unless you are a support character. 
when cutting your parachute, the cooldown to open it again has been reduced. So you shouldn't really run into the problem of cutting your parachute and not being able to open it and then hitting the floor again and dying. Angel's loadout crate has been changed now so that it allows for you to customize each slot in your loadout when you access it or just press the box once to resupply. Boris's sentry gun and Crawford's turret now do damage to armored vehicles. Admittedly, it's not a lot, but they do do that now and that kind of leans into the fact that they're now engineers and their role is anti-vehicle and anti-tank. Following this, Boris's sentry gun will now target vehicles instead of infantry if there are both in the vicinity. Liz's missile has received the buff of being easier to turn and having a longer range, but it can be shot down easier now as it has a bigger hitbox. McKay's nimble trait has been reduced, therefore his strafing speed is less broken now when moving with heavier weapons. With pistols and SMGs, it is still quite fast, but it's not quite as fast as it used to be, and its grapple hook range has been shortened from 30 meters to 24. This is probably a good change, but also I'm thinking some places on certain maps, such as the ship on Discarded, are the perfect height for McKay's grapple hook, so this might mean that you can't reach the top of those high places anymore, but I'll have to do some testing on that. Rao now paints a target like Soflam does when he hacks them, making him more useful for the team. And Sundance's smart explosives now use the right icon where there was a bug before when it would use the wrong icon and get the player confused. The EBLC Rams beacon will now always spawn you on foot instead of in the sky. I really like this aerial insertion. I'm not quite sure why this has been taken out. I will miss it, but that is gone. Helicopters will no longer spin on the ground when they've been destroyed. Their wreckage will no longer go into a spin of death and kill people around them. And the Super Hokum now has wreckage after being destroyed when before it would hit the ground and then just explode on impact. Speaking of destroyed vehicles, you should no longer hear the engine sound playing after they've been destroyed. You can no longer lock onto vehicles with weapons if you have no ammo to do so. If you don't have a rocket ready to go, say in a wildcat, you won't be able to lock on, which should reduce spam and increase readability when trying to avoid attacks. The damage of the Nightbird and ammo count has been reduced, and the stealth helos now have the repair and the flare item in the same slot, so you'll have to pick one or the other, not both. Bipods will now also remain open when switching weapons, whereas before you'd switch to your pistol and switch back, and your bipod will have magically undeployed itself again. That was really bugging me in some modes, so I'm glad to see that fixed. The idle sway for weapons has also been increased across the board to add a bit more weight to the weapons when shooting them or holding them. DICE have also updated the ADS movement speeds across the board and adjusted base speed across the board to make things feel a little bit more slow paced and less frantic. I think this is a good change, but once again, I'll have to see how this pans out in the long run. <sighs> okay. <laughs> there we go. That's all of the changes from 3.2 that we found and were in the patch notes. This was the biggest update yet in terms of notes and in terms of notes that really matter. There are a lot more changes to maps in terms of bug fixes, but they're really not worth mentioning on this video. And this video would probably reach 25 minutes if I did include them. So those are all of the ones that I thought mattered. And in conclusion, this update is probably my favorite yet. It's fixed one of my least favorite maps in terms of gameplay, it's introduced new vault weapons, it's introduced quality of life and immersive features that I've been asking for for ages, and it's made the game feel so much more battlefieldy when I didn't think it even could feel more battlefieldy for lack of a better word. I can see this as the turning point when a lot of older players are going to jump back on and play the game and that is awesome if that does happen and I can see it happening now. The game is really solid and I hope to have more updates in the future like this. And even now, season 4 isn't that far away. We're only a couple weeks out. So yeah, I'm a massive fan of this update. I'll have more videos coming out on it in the future. So stay tuned for those. If you did enjoy this video, leave a comment. Tell me what you thought about it and thought about this update in general. If you do want to come and talk to me or anybody else that does love this game, head over to the No Salt Discord. We'd be happy to have you there. We're talking everything Battlefield 2042 and update 3.2 right now. And if you do want to brush up on any of your lore knowledge before season four rolls around, head over to the Exodus archives. It is a lore forum and page full of everything that's ever happened pretty much 2042 wise. Specialists, battles, events, it's all there. Go and check that out. Anyway, thank you all for watching and watching to the end of this ridiculously long video for a patch notes video and I hope to see you again in the next video.